at the White House, the first top-level survey of current international problems by America and one of our allies since the start of the Kennedy administration. The President and British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan begin seven hours of talks on the first day with their respective top foreign affairs advisors participating. The discussions include international economic problems, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the United Nations, and aid to undeveloped countries. This is the first opportunity for the British and American leaders to see each other for extended periods at close range and to assess the other's outlook, abilities, and attitudes. An encounter of importance for the continuing Anglo-American alliance. Official Soviet films of recent space tests involving dogs, rats, and mice as rocket passengers. Scenes like these have rarely been released by Russia, despite their progress in space research. Recent reports indicate the Reds are pressing their man in space program at least as vigorously as America. Now come these scenes of a recent high altitude firing. Dogs are the test subjects rather than chimpanzees. The recovery of the passenger capsule in these films comes off without a hitch. This is the culmination of a high-altitude test, not a firing into orbit. But for the animal passengers, it's the end of a baffling ordeal of strange experiences, and the chief reaction seems to be, gee, it's great to be back. Alma-Alta, capital of the Siberian state of Kazakhstan, dutifully hails the arrival of Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Mr. K is personally checking up on lagging agriculture output throughout the USSR. Many farm bosses have been abruptly shifted to new jobs in the wake of Khrushchev's inspection tour. But in this public appearance, the local farmers find the premier in jovial mood after giving a four-hour pep talk. The emphasis by the locals is on how well they're doing, with choice specimens presented to Khrushchev by way of demonstration. Another farmer tops them all with this towering shock of corn and it all makes a good picture. But the widespread failure to meet crop quotas remains very apparent to observers of the Soviet system, both outside Russia and in the Kremlin. On the line and ready for takeoff, this QB-47 multi-jet bomber leaves pilot and crew on the ground. At an Air Force base in Florida, one of the most advanced remote control systems to date is demonstrated in these Defense Department films. The long-range, ultra-fast, multiple jet engine craft have the most complex control systems in the air. And until now, radio control just hasn't been able to take care of the multitude of operations necessary. But this new control system is adequate to put the B-47, a first-line combat craft, through its paces from takeoff up to the point where the ground control operator lets go and a mother plane takes over. Over intercontinental ranges at supersonic speeds, this plane could fly into combat with its pilot many miles away. Another stride in the automation that is making science fiction into everyday fact. A strike shuts down New York City's Bronx Zoo. And the startling absence of the usual spring crowd has the animals baffled and unsettled. Zoo workers continue to feed and care for their charges, but where's the point of living for a seal with no approval? Sad appeal by a seal with no deal. Even the usually standoffish types miss the people. A strange and unaccustomed hush fills the air. Where's the entertainment? Where did all the two-legged critters go? They miss the crowd, and most of all, they miss the kids. Those are the bare facts. Please, people. Soccer for the ladies with Germany in black and white uniforms playing host to Holland on a field deep in a very unladylike mud. Well, that's the fortunes of war. The gals don't seem to mind at all. It speeds up the action. Both sides are equally enthusiastic and have the same trouble getting organized. 
They just can't seem to get into scoring position. There's the try. It's blocked. And that's that for a while. But the crowd loves every minute of it. The favorite is Katinka here. Another scoring attempt. Still no good. But it's the best game the fans have seen in years. No thrills, but plenty of entertainment. Another try, wide of the mark, but the crowd loved it. Time is running out and still no score. Both teams are fighting hard as ever. In the final seconds, one Valkyrie boots in a goal, and Germany wins.